Each year, every annual conference of the Northeastern Jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church may select three youth for a mission of peace to another country. The purpose is to experience how other youth live out their faith and also to break down cultural stereotypes. Brittany Halverset, a 16-year-old of this conference, is here to tell us a little bit about her Nicaraguan peace mission. Brittany. Hi. One of the ways that you got to experience the Nicaraguan culture is by going to many different church services. How did their worship differ from our worship? Typically, like, there's a lot more singing, and, like, it was in Spanish, so we really couldn't understand them. But they had a lot of enthusiasm in the way they were singing. It was a lot of upbeat. You could hear people calling out, like, um, Jesus, and it was a lot more enthusiastic, and instead of like how you would see service here is they come, they sing, they sit. <laughs> um, there was other little things, like sometimes they would do little dances, and they enjoyed it. Were those random, or were they planned dances? They were planned. Oh, Okay. You brought a little bag along that you got there. Can you describe the importance of that? Yeah, Chaco Sente, a little, it's, there's a dump there. And what the dump is, like, people live there, and they scrounge out of the, like, trash and to survive and to live. And Chaco Sente is a relief program where they take families out, they put them there, they teach them different stuff, like, how to make bags or hammocks, um, teach them to be an engineer, to put the kids in a school so that they can get an education. And this bag is one of the bags that one of the women there made with the logo and their little symbol. So Chaco Sente is basically a Christian community that's helping them yes. to make their own living. Mm -hmm. Each family has 2.5 acres of land where they could farm on and they live in a community there together. It's neat that you said um, that whenever your, the cultural perceptions were changed, it wasn't necessarily um, the youth's perception change of the Nicaraguans, but the Nicaraguans changed their perception of us. Can you describe a little bit about how just the name referring to ourselves as Americans <laughs> was offensive? <laughs> well, we call ourselves Americans when we would go to another country. Yet, they live in Central America, so it's like, oh, we're American, okay, so they would say, like, okay, then where are we from? <laughs> yeah. Because they live in Central America, but we call ourselves Americans, and it offends them, because it's like, and we're not. Hmm. Yeah, I, I never really thought of that before, actually. What are some other things that you got to do on your trip? On our Sabbath day, we went to to visit volcanoes, or we went to the beach. Um, we did homestays with the families. We did go to different churches. We got to see some of the older parts of the country. And actually, while we were there, the day we went, and actually the day we left, was another United Methodist Mission group. And we went, and they, we, they asked us to come, and we went and saw what they were working on. And that was one day because we were right around where they were working and just went to see different places. How's the mission of peace different from, say, a typical um, mission trip? Well, we, don't, we usually don't do any work, like okay. building, construction. We did a few, little few, to, two or three days of it, I think two days at Chaco Sente and another day at another church. But in 16 days, that's not really a lot. Um, and the work could be from playing with children to putting bricks in, as I said. And so, like a normal mission trip is you go, you build something, take a picture of it, and you leave. Mm -hmm. We, you, What we did is you can't capture it on film. 
you capture it in your heart, you make connections with people, you make friends, lasting relationships with people there, and that's how it differs. How did the trip affect your faith? Well, I really didn't realize like how much poverty there was in the world before and how much people can look in to God in such hard situations like living in a dump and not having money for food, starving, yet still have the faith to wake up every day and pray for an hour and make it through each day by day. One woman we met while we were there, her name was Esther. She was she lived in the dump. She raised nine children there and she sent four of them to college. Wow. And she would wake up at five o'clock every morning. She would pray and then she would put on rice and beans and she would sell those that rice and beans to the people living there so that they could eat and she got four children through college. Wow. So would you encourage other youth to go on a mission of peace? Absolutely. Um, we, our conference had two from our conference last year, and there was a lot of other kids that went, but I would encourage anyone to go. Like, It's a life-changing experience. I would definitely go back. How do people find out how to apply to go on the mission? Well, you can go onto the conference website under Youth and Youth Missions, and it will be there. Um, so just fill out the application, send it in, and you're pretty much liable to go if there's not already two, three other people. Great. Well, if you would like to learn more about how you can go on a mission of peace, you can check out my Facebook page and my blog at sesquahannaexpress.blogspot.com.